Right across Newcastle and the Hunter to a new RFM 103.7. Time to have a look at some of the things happening in the world of education. We do that with our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, who this week, John, we're the, it's really the thing that I want to say in the last six or eight months even, it's exploded into every sphere of life, whether it be many workplaces and certainly now the conundrum for educators and AI and uh, and all the the artificial intelligence and around the chat uh, applications. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. This is the future, Mark, and we're in it now, right? We're in the 21st century. The Jetsons turned real. Chat. Although G- that flies <laughs> flying cars. That's all I want. Give me the flying cars. You can keep the rest. <laughs> ChatGPT was actually launched in November by a company named OpenAI, which is uh, one of those new dot-com kind of enterprises. The chat part we might get, you may be on an airline site or on a website where you see a little question mark or a paperclip or an avatar, and you can type in a question to it, and it's all artificial intelligence responding. A lot of websites are using that now to prevent you from having to talk to a person. You might be as aggravated as I, but most (laughs) of the time it does help you get to the next step. The GPT is the acronym, and it's for Generated Pre-Trained Transformer, which basically means this smart software hooked to a big server is searching the internet instantly, piecing together all the websites that are out there and generating content. And it can be refined the same way in the science fiction movies of the past, the artificial intelligence got smarter. Think Mr. Data on the original Star Trek show. Yeah, well, well... Eventually, you know, the real world catches up to science fiction. It's never really that far behind in in many regards. So the thought here is in in the education field and the learning environment in a real world context is if we're just getting kids to plug information into the computer, it'll just, like you said, it'll scour the internet and give you the information uh, without a lot of thought. But is this really a is this really a, a high tide that we can stop from coming in anyway? Well, the real worry in traditional settings where students look up information and regurgitate that information on exams or for papers and essays, mm. whether it's schools or universities, those folks feel really threatened now because mm. the quality of the work is actually reasonable enough that people are getting away with it, just as any kind of innovation can look just like the real thing. ChatGPT can create essays and create projects, and now there's a version of it that creates art and design and graphics for you for a fee Mm. uh, that'll allow you to sort of synthesize your own work rather than create it originally. So the dilemma is for those traditional institutions, they're panicking, putting all these rules in place, making people pinky promise or scouts honor that that's their (laughs) work. And Mark, that may not be the solution because I think Mm. you're right. You're just going to end up with the smart tools getting smarter and the rest of us looking dumber. So I think there's a different solution. When you sort of threw this topic at me this week, said, let's have a look at this. The first thing that came to me is I immediately went back to my old school days, which is high school, 89 to 94. And some are obviously even further than that. And I think that when we first got our calculators, yeah. And it was, hey, don't use the calculator, only use it for, you know, the type of problems and scenarios we give you. Because in the real world, you are not going to walk around with a calculator in your back pocket. That was the theory. We need to get you to think of problem solving, etc. But who would have thought that a couple of decades later, the, the mobile phone right. is at, at, at bare minimum a calculator and everything else. So the fact that if we keep shying away from these technologies and these ways of doing things... It's probably the it's sitting under the mushroom, isn't it? And what I think most skeptics will say is, will it stop us from thinking? I sent to you this morning, Mark, an mm. essay that I had it right about the future of radio in Australia. And it's not too bad. Now, this one printed in outline form, but it, it saved in about 23 seconds, mm. I did a lot of my homework. But it's not good enough, is it? it? It needs to be vetted. It needs to be fact-checked. But I think what most traditional educators will say is it'll prevent our kids from thinking. That was why when I came along, the original calculators came out uh, and that people were, oh, you won't be able to think. Well, what you need to be able to use it and apply it and use higher order thinking. So instead of just being able to compute it, can you apply it and, and synthesize it and also realize the number it may be giving you is wrong. You should be able to say that number two times two wouldn't be two million because that doesn't make sense. Mm. It does challenge teachers to create more higher level processes to say, all right, go through the AI, 
get yourself some information, now create original work. And if it's done in situ, in classrooms, or if it's online where drafts are submitted, mm -hmm. There is a way then for that to be scaffolded so we can sort of assure that the work at the end is actually the person who says they did it. The copy and paste mentality has ruined certain cultures in education. There's countries in Asia where they just cheat through high school and that's what the highest <laughs> bidder gets the assignment. So this isn't new, but this is the best version of the stuff. My worry is if we don't embrace it, we'll all be snookered and I don't think we have to. We could use this stuff to make a real difference in our classroom by saying, take that draft, make it better, make it yours, make it original, and then we'd be putting it in the chain for an assessment, not just assuming we've taught them not to do it. In other words, just if we work from the end result back for a little bit, right. just figure out a way to make to put the checks and balances in so we know that you are not just you know, copying something effectively from the internet and signing your name on it. If we could figure out a way to sort of get the pl the P word, I'm going to say, the plagiarism yeah, yep, out of yep. it, uh, I think we might be right. And just to get people into that, dare I say, new way of thinking or embracing the technology that's that in what since November has really made a huge impact whether we want it to or not. And a lot of this is looking so good that you wouldn't recognize it. If I said, write a letter to my grandmother about the beautiful autumn day, mm. you might get a letter better than you would have written. We also have to take ownership that, first of all, that's not right. And secondly, my grandmother's probably going to see that that penmanship's <laughs> better than mine in the end. So it's true. can we embrace it and go to higher level of performance, exhibition, demonstration, where we do things with the knowledge? That's the human skill. The machines are going to win on the other stuff. And you'll see that's not too bad. They've done work in about 10 seconds would have taken me two hours prior. And, and that other hour and 50 minutes, we could have been doing something more productive, <laughs> see? So use your time wisely. <laughs> Thanks, John, Mark. We'll, uh, we'll see how we go. We'll, uh, maybe we'll do, do up a couple of intros or something for next time you're here on the, uh, the chat GBT. <laughs> That'd eh? be great. There he is, our Professor of Education out of the University of Newcastle, John Fischetti, the non-AI version, the real-life version. He's, yep, he's real. 2NURFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.